would like to introduce Sarah Gardner Armstrong, being interviewed by David Ebony on her new work, Layered Scapes. With Sarah Gardner Armstrong, because I feel like she's a, a, a living legend, an American uh, classic who doesn't show in New York enough. I, I first saw her work at John Gibson Gallery in 1999. She's enormous drawings that were about processes and life processes, water. Um, today I was actually, my whole side of my face is numb because I was at the dentist, <laughs> you had a dental procedure. And I'm, not, I'm mentioning that just because I might be talking funny, but I was also thinking in the chair about life and Sarah's work with the body and the processes that you go through, especially the allusions to medicine and medical processes that are in Sarah's work. So I thought today it was important to talk about that process, because here we see beautiful abstract paintings with you know glorious compositions, beautiful color layering, but that's just one facet of Sarah's multifaceted career. Which leads me to ask you to tell us a little bit about your background and how you became an artist. That's a good segue, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the first time around, it was in elementary education, after taking a calculus and a philosophy and a religion course, and not doing very well with all that. <laughs> but, um, and then coming back later after teaching and realizing I wanted something, so it was either to go into science or to art. And I went directly into art and never stopped. So take us through a few of these paintings and your process with them and also the unusual materials. So I'm not really saying painting. This work is done horizontally, and I'm using abaca fiber or a pit fiber that's a paper making, and I am mixing pigment from paper making, which is very strong color, and I am literally pouring it on, and then it has to, you know, manipulating it some, letting it dry, peeling some back off, and layering it on, and, um, I'm working on accidents too. I'm working on trying to see what's going to react to something else with things, and uh, and it it takes a while with these paintings because they have to dry before you can't when you the color is going to be entirely different, and then some of the reactions and the bleeds and all this, and when you you know you don't have the complete control to just stop that bleed right there. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you could put the fan on and you could do some other things, but um, it's, it's, I think a lot of my work is about, as we said, process oriented. And it is about what, you know, not having complete control and dealing with change. And I think the sculpture, I think that, that is, um, it's always been for me, uh, that loss of control and then coming back and doing something with it. And how do you know when the when the painting is finished? Uh, sometimes you really just know it. <laughs> a lot of times, uh, this piece over here, I thought it might be good, but I wasn't sure. And I actually did not even send that image to Stephanie because I didn't want her to say, "What are you doing?" <laughs> you know? so, so it was just. Uh, but I thought <laughs> it might be pretty good. You know. And how did you start using abaco? I have been using uh, paper. I, way back there, before I even started, I would, would come to New York Central when I was in Alabama and get all this handmade paper. And then when I moved up here, and I'd work on this paper, and then uh, when I moved up here, I started going to Dudenay, the paper mill, and I get shape pieces. And, you know, I've never thought of myself as a paper maker because I do not make sheets. And in my head, a paper maker makes sheets. I make sculpture, I spray on paper, I do, you know, I am using fiber. And so all of this work here uses a, a, a fiber. 
And if you look at these in the context of your contemporaries, uh -huh. how do you relate these to, say, abstract expressionism or and or colored field painting? Uh, tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one. I'll, I'll read you. Um, uh, you know, I think it's. Um, I think what I am doing, they're they're doing much more with acrylics that you're pouring and staining. I think what I'm doing, because of the pigment, I am doing that staining, but I'm peeling off the layers and giving a sort of ghost images, which also relates to the sculpture that I do, where I'm airbrushing images on the wall, that cast in shadows, and so it, it sort of relates to some of that. You, you mentioned shadows, and you mm -hmm. mentioned that in interviews and other statements about shadows. What What is your feeling about shadows? Okay, when I started with the shadows, it was I was casting shadows, and I was uh, painting shadows. And, you know, I'm from the South, and the South to me is very gothic. It's about re shifts of reality. Um, it's about, you know, that you open the closet and the goos come out, mm -hmm. but it's it's all you know it, and I feel like it really has affected me. It it layers. I always do layers, and I think the South is very layered uh, area, and um, I feel like my work is very much about layers, and not it's not going to be something that's right, right you know horrible in your face, because I don't feel like that's. That's not what it's, you know, it doesn't come from that. So you always leave a lot of breathing space on the canvas, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. relates to your sculptures about breathing, breathing. and mm -hmm. more of a bodily process. Yeah, the bodily. Um, and I think my landscapes are interior or exterior. Uh, they don't really necessarily have to be, you know, one or the other. It's, it's, it's the sort of landscapes. And you also have spoken a lot, a, a bit in the past, about geological time, and that your early drawings, and these seem to relate to that concept. Mm -hmm. What is your concept of geological time in, with, in the context of an artwork? I think I, you know, I think there's two, two fall there, and one is that whole thing about, um, that whole, what is time? And, and the moment of time, when you know time, it's, it's gone again. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is, and I think a lot of the work is about that, that moment of time that passes and that, that, that you layer on to it. And um, I think that I am, um, I think in the sculpture it's doing that, and I think in these paintings it's doing that. Well, here's another tough one. <laughs> that was hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> what is your feeling about landscape and spirit? Landscape and spirit. Um, I think that if the, you know, I think when I'm talking, when I'm working, I'm consumed in it, in the work, and that it has to have in order to be a finished piece, it has to have a sort of spirit to it. And, um, and I think that's one of the things that, it, and the spirit can be also, you know, it doesn't just have in that box of religion, but it's a spirit. It has, a, it has something there that speaks out to you. As you're in the process of creating, it's, it's not something you think about afterwards. No, it, it's it's in the you're in there, and you and I, I, you know, again, I'm very process oriented, and so I am not particularly um, cons consumed with thinking about that word. I'm just consumed in the piece, and that's part of the work. Mm -hmm. And also, I needed to ask you about your relationship to minimalism. Because it, especially some of your early installations and sculptures have got referred to as I know it. Um, you know, I have a battle. I've had that battle uh, between minimalism and organicness. 
And um, when I was working on the book, I realized this, this, this battle's been a long time in the process from the early beginning. And I think it's one of the reasons I can't work outside. I want the boundaries of something. And uh, because I still have that battle, but early on I really did go in with the early canvas pieces. That was, you know, I had that curve and, and I, the paintings, when as they started coming off the wall, and we'll look at a piece of sculpture a little bit, but as they came off the wall, it was much more interesting to be in an environment that you walked around and your shape related to this shape. But it is a, it, it's, a it's a contradiction that I think has given me a lot of energy through time. A battle. Mm -hmm. And then I wanted to ask you about the emotional content in the work, because you also have said that there have a lot to do with loss, with um, love. And, um, so some of the, the um, when I did the work at the Bronx Museum and that installation, my mother was dying, it, the Gulf War was going on, and I was completely consumed. You know, I really didn't know much difference between my mother and the war and all of that. So the work is very, that work in particular was very much about loss and skins and uh, breathing uh, later, but I, you know, I still am off. It, it doesn't seem that sad to me, but yet it is. And in the skin rack with the x-ray parts in it, um, I uh, was, and it did, it did have to do with death. I had a, a body bag laying over a, uh, over a rail that then became later a form on the floor that ends up having the bag breathing, which becomes a reciprocating support. You know, it, it just is, it went from, and it also went to, a, there were some that went very valid. Mm -hmm. So it sort of is all of those emotions, and I think the, uh, and there's a piece that is two caskets, plastic with breathing inside. And for me, that was about relationships that are, you know, side by side and never touching. And then I think everyone would want to know, do you think of yourself as a feminist? And, and, and if so, how and why? I think of myself as a woman that's going to do what she wants to do. And I think that, you know, I did not manage to be, I was in some of the feminist organizations. I didn't do as much as maybe I would have wanted to, but I feel like we've got to be as tough as we can be. Good answer. <laughs> when David was mentioning about minimalism, you know, this is really coming right out of that. I'm very much affected by it. This is wooden forms with stretch canvas and airbrush and sound and speakers are all in um, the speakers are in different positions there and so you and it's very the sound is very bodily so that you feel it when you go in the center of it and the color there's a color change when i was speaking of the this piece right here where the it, the two caskets mm -hmm. they very much breathe and it's um and it actually has a little sound um, and these are from your show, your recent This is touring, recent, recent. museum show, maybe say. Yeah, this about. was from, uh, it was a show that toured for two years, and each location was very different, and this is the last location. And uh, like this, the piece that has the backs and the white, those were done earlier for the Bronx Museum. They were very much, in, and I think what happened with showing it again, I ended up with this LED light of drawing in space with it. And here is a breathing box. Uh, this is, it, it sort of is harder to see on the video that it, it just breathes in and out, but uh, you know, it has um, sort of a subtle meditative quality about that. Were, were those the closed systems that you That That would have been, yes, that is very much a contained closed system. Yes, it's, it's, it is. It, it's, and you know the the water and the ocean have been always really important to me. It's the sound system. Then you walk along the edge, 
and you can hear it in sort of that whole meditative and the power of the water and the ocean, sort of life-giving and, and life-taking. So for me, the, the previous one, well, let me go back here. This one is, you know, is that closed breathing system. Does that have a sound? It, it has a low sound. It's not very loud. Yeah. Like breathing. Yeah, it's a breathing. And then this is the skin rod, which is, has the x-ray equipment, which is a 3M optical lens. And I use that as that. And those are, you know, they're, real, they're light skins. They're hanging with fish hooks at the top on a rack. And there's a grow green light on the base, which gives it. So for me, the grow green was important. <laughs> it's for the skins. <laughs> and then this is just recently a um, air player installation that I did at the Gaston Museum. And here what I have is, so they're blower boxes. And those are blowing off and on switching. So they're blowing air to sort of slightly shift. And then instead of shadows being painted on the walls, there are four projectors. So they're coming from both directions, and there's a wall you're not seeing that has four on it. But then one is low, so that you are a part of this piece when you walk into the space. Your shadow is also cast in it. How, how important is the circulation of the viewer? Is that, do you start out there? or how, No, I don't start out there, but it's really important. It's, um, and I think a lot of this work has a physicality and that in order to really experience it, you need to be physically there. And, and it's like the early P, the early sound, it's the air players that you, you walk in it. This you're not walking in it, but you are casting inside of it. It's so important to keep that in mind these days in our Instagram mm -hmm. universe where you know, I try to get my students go and look at art because it's yeah. so different. But even this is a, a three-dimensional experience to walk around and look at these paintings mm -hmm. because it's not like looking at a digital image. It's got life. It's got the spirit. Uh -huh. if, yeah. you're, if you're open to it, you will feel that uh -huh. from these works, but you can only feel that in person. Yeah, I really think I really think it's just true. It's just you. Yeah. You don't get it in an image. And, and actually, not, I don't want to keep blathering on, but these forms in this relate so uh -huh. much to uh -huh. these paintings. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, and that's, I was thinking that, you know, because we were talking about that the paintings don't just come from, they're part of the whole group, a whole body of work, and they come from these forms and these gestures that the sculpture makes. And then this piece is the figure that once was laying over a rod, you know, a, a banister, as just a body bag, and then becomes with all the light in it and the breathing of the bag that it becomes something else. It, and, and it has this part over here. So, you know, a lot of this was from the hospital too, but it is reciprocating. They're life support things. When we were talking about the relationship of the paintings, uh, to sculpture. I just put this in here too because this was a piece from the Air Players Limited Edition that some of you all remember that it really has, it has the forms of the paintings, you know, with that gestural. Mm -hmm. And again, inside these, there's LEDs and, and a little incandescent light that changes and sandblast it. So it is, it goes, it goes, it has the layers of the paintings. Are they in an addition? Are they unique? Uh, each is it is an addition, but each is a, each environment is a little different. Yeah, it was a, a piece of work that um, I did after doing the air players for so long, which is the breathing and all this. But it was like I wanted to not have installations; I wanted in it in something I could carry with me, mm -hmm. and so that was when these environments happened. Now, this is another atrium that is, uh, was deal very much with the lungs, and it was for a biotech firm and, uh, outside of DC. And inside these bags are, are breathing. And I think a lot of my work is very much about drawing in space, the sculpture. 
So again, it's the gestural. And the hoses became these drawings. Mm -hmm. How closely, if you get a commission like that, how closely do you work with the scientists or whoever has um, staff in the This not so much, but this next one, this one right here, tremendously. This was for multiple cirrhosis. And I did not understand, I didn't know the disease. I had dealt with breathing forever. So that I understood. But I worked really, you know, I felt at first that my studio was a lab because there were so many in, images. And then finally I realized that, you know, I can't discover how to solve this. I'm doing an art piece that's related to this. But it was, and so for me, what this, I'll show you a video short, but it is an abstraction of the brain with sort of the, it's a landscape, with the neck becoming, you know, back here, that going into the spine. And, uh, and the LEDs move through, the light is moving around, and when they turn red, it's referencing that you can't move your arm or something. So, and they're like neurons. And it's on permanent. It's in permanent feet, yeah. Okay. It's in Birmingham. That was that was sort of my introduction back to, you know, that it would be nice to live there. <laughs> Again, I've done that. Do you find the reception of your work different in different parts of the, the country? Um, you know, it's been easier with doing this touring show, doing it in a a region that you could drive and easier, and also that I have a building where I have a lot of this work. So I think the logistics in New York is harder if you don't have as much of the work, and some of the places that I've lived have been much more limited. Now, but I will say that the atrium with the breathing, I did that in an apartment. So you can do whatever you want to do, but <laughs> it's just not as easy. Yeah, yeah, so there it is that. So I just, also, I thought this was kind of fun. You know, again, with sculpture, and with, particularly with this commission, which I worked on over a year, and the LED drawing, you know, um, it was also so hard because I had not worked with LEDs, and you have to, they have to connect. And so all of those runs, all of that has to be. But for me, it was sort of like some of the paintings, you know, for over here. And then this is the light with the LEDs. Having had this retrospective of survey, uh -huh. how did it make you revisit your career so far in your mind? And how did that lead to the future? What do you see? What, what do you, what's next for you? So um, it really has, I, I will, let's say, also put the book in there. Because the gift of the book was that someone else didn't just control it you know, give everything over. I got to, took, took time to find images and all of this. And so I really, you know, went through that whole thing about the contradictions in the work and what the work is about and the, you know, and, uh, and so that was, and then to have the chance of having a traveling show with all of this work for two years was sort of a really nice thing. And, um, and I think what it did, it, it, um, it made all this diverse body of work for me sort of hold together and to see the relationships in it. And um, I think it gave me just, you know, you just keep going. You just don't stop any. And, um, and like the, there was one piece with the LEDs and the, so the ropes hanging down, again, more that drawing in space. And I'm, I, you know, excited about what's ahead. Well, the, the monograph is gorgeous. I'm very proud to be part of that. Thanks. It's a really beautiful book if you haven't all seen it. Um, so, do you have a specific work that you're thinking about right now? Well, I have been so loving doing the paintings. And I would like to do a little bit more. I have a piece of sculpture that comes up that I have to, uh, a piece that I'm working on for, um, and it's a group show. But um, I haven't quite, 
I just got it. I need to keep painting a little bit more too, and just see where that leads. Are there any questions? Well, I have an observation. I think she is the least externally influenced artist I've ever met. <laughs> you know, it's all from within. And to me, um, these paintings just speak of a tremendous freedom and arrival and sort of joy and airiness. And whether that's the book or having your tour finished or whatever, I don't know what, but it's definitely an internally driven situation. I'm curious about your experience with painting and how much you enjoy it because you have so much experience with other kinds of work, you know, working with other people. Um, uh, so what is it about the painting, particularly from a process point of view, that's different and, and, and special for you at this moment? Oh, I, I think one of the things, I get to be by myself. And I think that I do do with people a lot. And, but I, I love just some of the isolation. And, and I love just, it also does not have physical problems. You don't have to make it stand. You don't have to let the electronics do. You know, there and you can just be consumed in it. And um, I, you know, I just that's just such a nice, wonderful thing to be. And just uh, and when once you know you start a painting and you always you know you get lost and you're just you know it's not good. And then all of a sudden something happens and you then are just completely taken into it and you're not figuring what you can do with it. Well, thank you, Stephanie Lawrence, for bringing this show to New York. Thank you. Thank you.